I have to come clean. I, Lacey Green, am a feminist. I'm a feminist because my father never once did the laundry, made dinner, or cleaned the house. Because when I was younger and I took on a leadership role, all the adults in my life said, you're being bossy. And let's not forget that sneaky little pay gap. I'm a feminist because of the reality that there are people who would take these words more seriously if they were coming out of my mouth. I've never condoned the SJW stuff. It's super pro-censorship. Nobody ever wants to assume that you are just a person who means well, you no. know? You always mean the worst. It's always that you're a bigot. I think it's really toxic and destructive and very hypocritical. In this video, allow me to play internet historian and remind you all of the feminist YouTuber Lacey Green. Back from 2008, probably earlier. I mean, she's been on YouTube so long that her old videos are in standard definition. But do you remember when Lacey was all about the cause, the wage gap, and all the feminist stuff? She was one of the major young faces of feminism, but all of that changed in 2017 when feminists turned on her and threw her under the bus. Why did they do that? Partly because Lacey released this video here called Taking the Red Pill. This is the material that feminists found so hateful. I went down the rabbit hole of anti-SJW videos, and I found that some are pretty disrespectful. But that's not all the channels. I've recently found anti-SJW channels that are well-cited and reasoned, you know, make some interesting points. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, I agree with that, or huh, I didn't really think of that. And sometimes I disagree, in which case, you know, I still feel it's beneficial for me to listen and consider another perspective. It helps me learn. Such a disgusting crime. How dare you say the enemy made a good point? You are an awful person and you need to be canceled. I mean, haven't you seen this article from The Guardian? It says that anti-feminists are mass killers who hate women and then links to an event from 30 years ago, which of course proves that this behavior is true of anti-feminists in general. Sarcasm aside, this article is not fake. The Guardian actually published that as fact, trying to relate men who don't like feminists to two different psychopaths. But how dare Lacey say such nice things about such terrible people? Then she did something worse. She tried socializing and making amends with the anti-SJW crowd. So I decided to reach out to some. And, you know, I was pleasantly surprised. People have been pretty kind to me. And, you know, I'll be honest, they didn't really expect that. No judgment, no vitriol. I even feel like I have a really good connection with a couple of new friends. How could she do that? How could a person who is a part of a group that always claims to spread love instead of hate show kindness to the enemy? It's almost like she thinks that someone who has a different opinion than her is a real person and means those words when she says them. Unlike mainstream feminists who say they want to spread love, not hate, as some stupid platitude to distract people from all the bad things they do and all the terrible arguments they make. There's more to this story, but first, if you like the content you see on this channel, then consider making a donation. Viewer support helps keep me independent, and it helps fund the channel. Links to my PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar pages can all be found in the description. And also, don't forget to support me on Alt Tech. Links to my Odyssey, Rumble, and Minds pages can be found in the description as well. Alright, for those of you who don't know, Lacey Green is a longtime YouTuber who originally became known for videos talking about sex education. Then she worked with MTV on a channel called Brawless, and became known for being a feminist back in 2014, and probably before that, which is all fine. People are allowed to believe things that you don't agree with. What is not fine, though, is what is the essential theme of my channel, which is that mainstream feminists are bad faith actors. They are not genuine people. They are just using a cause that people care about to promote bad values that cause division. The situation with Lacey Green confirms that, because what was Lacey's crime? One, she criticized feminism's proclivity towards censorship. I want to talk to people because I think things have gotten a little out of control yeah. in the feminist sphere. It's super pro-censorship. Like, overtly pro- Like, we are going to campaign to get you censored. This is actually a consistent principle from Lacey and is something that she's always believed. The reason that she got into talking about sex education on YouTube is because she was tired of being censored on that subject by her community's Mormon values. So that's crime number one. Lacey is anti-censorship. She dare give a platform to people who feminists call bigots. People have this idea, kind of like what I was talking about before, right? Where if you talk to somebody who has views that you believe are abhorrent or hurtful or harmful or whatever, that that is giving them power, it's giving them a platform. 
Um, this is what all of the feminist YouTubers sort of disowned me over, right? They said that I was like empowering yeah. the right or whatever, like empowering the people that I disagree with by, by simply talking to them. Right. Why do the woke groups think like that? Is it because they are lying to people and most of their best arguments are super easy to disprove? How else is speaking to your opponent going to give them power? Because when you debate people with bad arguments, they actually lose power. So what feminists are saying is that they are afraid of losing when they platform their critics, which is why they won't do it. Lacey's second crime is this picture with Carl Benjamin or Sargon of Akkad. And really, how could this picture happen? Sargon is an anti-feminist who made fun of her videos and said mean things. He also said her sexual assault story was fake. How dare she take this picture with him? Well, it turns out that if you have a disagreement with someone or a person says bad things, you don't immediately have to cut them out of your life forever. You can actually attempt to make amends. And that's what you should do first, especially with personal relationships. You don't shut someone out completely because you had one bad argument or they did one small bad thing. That is something I cannot stand about woke culture. They actively encourage their followers to shut people out over nothing. This is the wrong answer because sometimes if you wait a few days and actually talk to the person, you might repair the relationship then you don't lose that person in your life. Or, in the case with Lacey, you make a new friend. Anyway, here's what led to that picture. I just sort of ran into Carl on a street corner as we were moving our party elsewhere. And that was the first time that I had met him. And we just sort of stared at each other. And, you know, he held out his hand to shake hands. And I was like, wait, you're not going to give me a hug after all this shit you put me through. I think you owe me a hug. He hugged me and he just sort of, you know, leans down to my ear and says, I'm really sorry. You know, I had no idea what I was doing. I regret it. That to me was just like earth shattering. I will never forget that moment yeah. for the rest of my life. Say what you want about Lacey's ideas, but this was a very positive move. Actually, speaking of, I don't think I agree with her on any of her ideas outside of her core principles like her belief in free speech. That being said, because Sargon was the one who wronged her, she was the one who had the power in this situation, and she gave it up by forgiving him. It's kind of sad to see that this seems to have largely been a forgotten event, when it should have been the shot heard around the world in terms of repairing the divide. What mainstream feminist has ever done something like that? What Lacey did completely changed their relationship dynamic. Sargon and Lacey fought and had a huge drama between them, yet they made amends and paved the way to building a relationship where two people who disagree can communicate without having hatred for each other. This is what people should be doing. Sargon seems to feel the same way as he speaks against the way the woke SJW crowd treated Lacey after this event. One thing that annoys me is that, like, you know, six months ago, everyone was like, yeah, we love Lisa Green. She's great. She's a feminist. She's, you know, she, her sex ed stuff's brilliant, blah, blah, blah. Right. And then as soon as she's like, you know, I, I kind of, I met this guy. I like this guy. And he's actually making some really good points. They're like, <gasps> your sex ed stuff sucked. You suck. Whoa. Everything you've ever done sucked. Get out of our, I mean, and, and then, I mean, you know, she gets death threats and things like that. But why, is, why do people give a fuck who people date? Why does that Because bother they're them? controlling psycho cultists. Let me just clarify that I'm not talking about the left here, and neither is Sargon. From my memory, he actually started out on the left and moved more towards the right because of these crazy activists saying and doing insane things. Really, it's the job of both parties to denounce the radicals in their groups so that those radicals don't gain power and take over the party. Otherwise, you get a bunch of mostly peaceful protests that actually did some major harm to the communities that those groups were claiming they were burning down buildings to protect. So who is this guy that Lacey began dating? Apparently, it was a guy named Chris Reagan. Let's take a second to Google him. Here's an article by Vox saying that Chris is a member of the alt-right. Oh no, how could she go so wrong by letting someone evil like this into her life? Here's a super racist article by the Huffington Post that also says Lacey is now involved with the alt-right. How terrible. But wait just a second here. Would you be shocked if I told you that both Vox and Huffington Post are liars who regularly print libel? I know this may seem like a surprise, but what if I told you that Chris Reagan is not alt-right? He's actually on the left. Doesn't that just blow your mind? Uh, anybody who knows me, anybody who's followed me for a long time knows that I am a staunch liberal. I am probably the most liberal person you will ever meet in your entire f***ing life. 
Uh, and that is why I talk about social justice warriors. That is why I talk about the regressive left. That's why I talk about this perverted form of liberalism that's been taking over media and social media for the last couple of years. Because I don't see it as an asset. I see it as a danger. Because it, what it does is it essentially – the whole idea behind the regressive left is using a liberal stance to justify regressing back in time. They justify things like segregation. He's absolutely correct here. And don't think that you're immune to this if you're on the right. I remember back when Harry Potter came out, a bunch of crazy religious activists tried to get it canceled because it was promoting witchcraft. Tons of nonsense things were censored when I was a kid because of the right. Now that the left is the establishment party favorite, they are still trying to cancel J.K. Rowling by calling her a turf. This kind of behavior needs to be denounced on both sides over and over again because if you don't, radical groups will infect your party and their ideas will take over. That becomes a big problem for everyone. Now, I was not familiar with Chris's content before making this video. Maybe I watched a video of his back in the day, but probably not more than one or two of them. After watching a bunch of his content for the video, I mostly agree with the statement about where he aligns politically. Chris appears to be center-left with consistent principles on fair play. Principles that are so consistent that even though he called her a bigot in that last clip, he defended Anita Sarkeesian when for some reason, she got censored. It's also really irritating, by the way, that I know that, like, I know as I'm making this video, I know that people are gonna be like, Ah, Chris is defending Alex Jones because he's an alt-right edgelord. I just know it. I just know those people are going to come swarming in. I know it's going to happen even though I've defended people like Anita Sarkeesian who've had their channels terminated in the past for bullshit reasons. He was referencing when Alex got banned from every social media platform, suspiciously within like three days. More on Anita later. First, let's go over some of the treatment that Lacey got purely because she said she was against censorship and because she wanted to debate people who had views that are different from hers. One, she got a ton of internet hate for it from the SJW crowd. There were a lot of negative comments on her tweets with Sargon, who alleges that many of those comments that she received were threats on her life. We have a lot of dislikes on her red pill video. That's not the worst dislike ratio in the world, but in my opinion, anything over 10% dislikes is bad. Moving on to things that are more severe. She had two major corporations, Vox and Huffington Post, print libel, which is the written form of slander, saying that she changed her views and now associates with a radical group called the alt-right. This is crazy because not only is that stuff about the alt-right not true, but Lacey didn't change her beliefs either. You can watch this video on Steven Crowder with them talking, and she takes the left position on politics every time. She also said this while talking to Tim Pool during that time period. Like I'm, I'm just like in the middle, like talking about I feel what's like happening. We're all kind of in that. Yeah, you can't. A little you can't bit. make it. <laughs> well, you know, you're a, you're a traitor. I'm not a traitor. I'm a, I'm as libtarded as they come. You know, like I am not. I I'm not like changed sides. All I said all right, was right. I'll talk to you. You can agree with free speech and be on the left. Yes. Right. Yeah. But it's but let's the, not make let's not give that to the right. The only thing I've seen her flip on was the wage gap, which is easy to do because the science behind that is nonsense. Have you changed your stance on the wage gap given the overwhelming evidence pointing towards perfectly reasonable and non-sexist non systemic or otherwise factors? Yes. Uh, yeah, I've, I've done more digging into the. I still think I, I, the research still shows a wage gap, but it does show that there is a much more complicated picture than the sort of 77 cents to a dollar. And she didn't even flip all the way. Here's the more disgusting behavior that the activist did to Lacey simply for saying that she wants to open a dialogue with people who aren't in the woke cult. They went back like 10 years to a video that she made when she was 17 about Chris Crocker. Speaking of me being Mr. Internet Historian here, do you remember the Leave Britney Alone video? Well, Lacey had said in one of her videos that Chris Crocker is her favorite T-word. It's ironic that the woke people would have a problem with that because Chris, now Kara, used to say that word to refer to herself. Here's the thing with going back in history and retroactively punishing people for new rules that you recently made up. Back in 2006, or whenever this was, everyone was saying these words. Everyone was saying the new F word that we now can't say, and the T word. I bet you could find any celebrity who was old enough and devoutly against the use of those words, saying them multiple times back in the early 2000s. Do you see why I don't like the censorship of words? Especially now that everything is being recorded. 
You are literally giving authoritarians and the establishment the ability to retroactively attack anyone, particularly the people who are on their own side, who take one step out of line. I mean, what about this? If I'm working on a car, am I allowed to abbreviate the word transmission, or will I be canceled for that? Because I've been around mechanics and I know they frequently abbreviate the word transmission to something that is apparently now a cancelable offense. But of course, we know that people who tow the party line won't get punished for their use of the new F word or their use of things like blackface as long as they say what the establishment wants, which is exactly why this is so hypocritical. It's just a tool to keep everyone in line. That's why this censorship has nothing to do with protecting people. I guess that the hysteria and the war on words and political correctness has now made it so that people are afraid to laugh. Yeah, no, I, I think that that is a side effect of this problem. That is a, that's actually a big side effect because people need to laugh. People need to be relaxed and have a good time. And even if they say something that's like a little bit f***ed up, stop acting like that's causing genocide. You know, like it's <laughs> not, we, we go from zero to is a it, thousand, yeah. like so quick. Yes, I agree. Stop pretending that you are protecting people when the reality is that you are just using these people to promote your political cause and silence dissenting opinions. That's the real harm. They are taking advantage of people who are already suffering, and instead of helping them, they are turning them into radicals. They are also, in a screwed up way, telling people that you are not allowed to change your opinion as you get older. Imagine this. Let's say in the past you were a staunch conservative with a terrible personality. You have a conversation with someone that changes your life, and now you are super woke. At any point in time, woke people on your side could pull up a tweet that is 12 years old and say, We found this awful thing that you said on Twitter more than a decade ago when you were in high school, so now you are forever a terrible person. Do you really think that punishing people for who they were instead of praising them for changing their ways is a method of showing kindness and a method of showing that you care about other people? Because to me, that looks manipulative and evil. My personal philosophy is there needs to be like an opinions expiration date. Like more than a year ago, you yeah. cannot reasonably assume that I think the same exact thing or would say or, you know, discuss it the same exact way. But doesn't that make you a flip-flopper, Lucy Green? <laughs> no, you it makes you an evolving, open-minded, learning, growing human being. And that's something we should encourage. You know, yeah. not like, look at you, you changed. Yeah. You, you're, you grew and learned things, you terrible person. You know, it's yeah. just like, what? I completely agree because I'm constantly learning new things and my opinion changes all the time. There are things I said even just last year that I've changed my beliefs on because of new information. That's called growth. It's also why you don't see me pulling up 10-year-old tweets from people and saying they still believe something they said 10 years ago. What I try to do if I find material that is dated that I want to use is I look at content that is recent from that person to see if they still have the same beliefs. If they don't, I throw that information away. Or, if they have renounced the belief, I will actually take time to point that out to show that the person has grown. That's called making a good faith argument. One last thing, and personally, I think this is the most egregious thing that happened. Here it is. You know, and I actually had a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, this is actually, I'm still processing it, Mm -hmm. a good friend of mine who you know, is campaigning after I came out with this stuff, a good feminist friend of mine, we had planned to go travel together and we've been, we've traveled a lot together already, who decided to, who wanted to make a petition, you know, to shut my channel down or, I don't even remember exactly what it was, but it was just like, what the hell? Like this, this is someone I'm pretty good, I'm pretty good friends with. As bad as all the threats were, as bad as the doxing was that I forgot to mention, as bad as the lies about her that Vox and Huffington Post printed, and as bad as people pulling up old videos was, this was definitely the worst of it. Someone who she invited into her life and trusted is now a bitter enemy who wants to destroy her. Betrayal feels awful, not just because of the completely idiotic reason that this friend disowned her, but because it reflects back on you as, how could I have been so dumb that I would trust this person? Well, at least she knows now. One of the sentiments that she gave during the Dave Rubin interview is that in the past, she always felt like she was walking on eggshells when she was around her social justice warrior friends, saying one wrong thing would set someone off. If you've ever been around SJW type people, I'm sure you know what this is like. They are offended by everything and will lash out over any small misstep. Oddly enough, when Lacey found her new group of friends, who the woke crowd says is supremely hateful, 
she no longer walks on eggshells. I really value loyalty. I'm a very loyal person, and I find more of my, like politically, I find more of my moderate to right leaning friends are, at the end of the day, even if they think I'm like a crazy nut job liberal or whatever, right? They aren't gonna just up and up and leave me and you know stop talking to me like many of my liberal friends have. You know, I I've never been abandoned by my right wing friends over my views, but yeah. left wing absolutely. Maybe the new conservative motto should be. Come to our side. We won't treat you like shit like the woke people do. Because this is, again, the main theme of the video. I don't have a problem with the left, but I do have a problem with woke people because they are bad people. Anita Sarkeesian being a prime example of the type of person who leads this community. So Anita Sarkeesian, uh, she spots me <clears throat> sitting in the audience, and then she starts freaking out. Freaking out. Yeah, she starts She starts saying things like, there's a constant harasser of mine, calling me, you know, she called me a shithead, she called me a garbage human. A garbage human? I did nothing to her. I didn't say a word, I just sat in the audience while she's there cussing me out on the stage. Wow, who could have predicted that a person who made herself famous by lying about video games would also be a terrible person? I mean, next you're going to say that while she was saying all this bad stuff about games, she had never even played them. It's a soundtrack of one song, except I'm doing video games. So it's not exactly a fandom. I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games in the process of making this. Sorry if you've already seen that a bunch of times. I had to show it because this happened a long time ago, and people who haven't seen it or forgot need that context. Just remember, guys, all the people saying that there isn't enough wokeness in video games or in comics don't even consume the material they complain about. If they did, there wouldn't be so many woke flops in the comics industry. Speaking of having to show things, here's the video of Anita harassing Sargon. If you Google my name on YouTube, you get shitheads like this dude who are making these dumbass videos that just say the same shit over and over again. And like, I need to give you attention because you're a garbage human. Whatever, dude. Guess what? It turns out that her saying that is against the harassment rules at VidCon. And uh, I find it very interesting. When Anita was calling me a shithead and garbage human, that's a direct violation of their code of conduct. And did they do anything about it? No. And so I said, right, Hank and John, she's violated your code of conduct. Her fans, she's incited a cyber mob of harassers, exactly as she claims I do, but she has actually done this. Then on the Saturday, she was due to be on a panel about cyber harassment. If that's not the definition of irony, then I don't know what is. Don't tell me that YouTube or the creators of VidCon care about harassment when they prop up figures like Anita. It's all a facade. Am but I mean, is she respected in that world? No, no, everyone hates her. Why do they still prop her up? Because she's Anita Sarkeesian. He's not being hyperbolic about that. Here's a feminist commenting on Anita's past behavior regarding her company, Feminist Frequency. So you feminist frequency people out there who have engaged in your own harassment against me, who have gotten me blacklisted in this industry, who have basically made people afraid to support me because it crosses your ire and they don't want that. They don't want the trouble of treating me like a human being because you have sent up the flares in this damn industry that anybody opposes you is subhuman and bad for women. So if you think his behavior is bad, you better look in the damn mirror and check yourself because you are guilty of everything that you accuse them of. The problem is you are more effective at what you do. You actually cause people to be shunned in this industry. People deny me interviews and don't want me covering their product because I am anti-feminist frequency. Not because people who think you're right, but because they're afraid, okay? Everybody is afraid of getting spanked by the feminist frequency paddle because that is a rallying cry to the Twitter mobs. Let's not forget the Kickstarter fraud where she raised $160,000 to make a couple of videos that were so simple that I could have made them in my mother's basement for free and in less time. She took so long to make the videos that she promised that tons of people were outraged because they thought she just took the money and ran. In my memory, she ended up blowing the 160 k on nonsense, or just pocketed it, and had to do another Kickstarter for more. But we aren't done. I'm showing so many examples because I want to display the exact type of person who the woke people see as a role model. Take it from someone who has spoken with her and said he likes Feminist Frequency's content. 
<laughs> how about we don't exclude anybody? How about we all just work together? Yeah. Let's just do that. Yeah. yeah. And that was my goal according to that panel. And Anita, in my closing statements, that's basically word for word what I said. And then we got off stage, and she puts her finger in my face, and she's like, I don't fucking appreciate what you fucking said up there, knowing I didn't have a chance to fucking respond. And I'm like, it was closing statements. Everybody got a chance to close. <laughs> they went to you next immediately after me. I don't understand. Ironically, this happened at the cyberbullying conference that Sargon referenced earlier. Gee, a conference against bullying where one of the speakers bullies another. With friends like that, who needs enemies? Even after she treated Boogie like that and quite frankly said some racist stuff, Boogie still said he thought she was genuine. So we go backstage and I talk to her for an hour. And here's what I will say, and I think this is the thing that got me in more trouble than anything. I think Anita Sarkeesian's goals might be genuine. Here's what I can say. I came out thinking, I just kind of feel bad for her. Because I think that she, you know, wants to build something great, but keeps knocking it down herself mm. every single time. Mm. And I'm just like, okay, I don't really have a bone to pick with this woman anymore, because I just kind of feel like bad. No, Boogie, she's not. First of all, you said yourself that you were afraid of doing a panel with her because of how she treated Sargon. This year's VidCon was a little bit different because I went into it very, very nervous. But what made me nervous about this is when I discovered that one of my panelists uh, was a notable feminist by the name of Anita Sarkeesian. I was afraid that I would do something or say something that would upset her. Uh, you know, we philosophically disagree in some small areas, but, and unfortunately on the first day of VidCon, something happened that made my anxiety uh, go almost completely out of control. Uh, uh, during Anita's first panel uh, called Women on Gaming, that panel went very, very wrong with some people uh, attacking them during the Q&A section. And even during that panel, some people who were sitting right near the front are people she considers to be detractors of hers. And she became uh, so nervous and felt so attacked that she actually uh, called one of those detractors uh, names right to their face. I'm sure you've heard about this controversy. And because of that, I began to be very afraid uh, that if she disagreed with me, she might do the same during our panel. Again, walking on eggshells around woke social justice warriors. Second, I know she's not genuine because you said this. She sat down and talked to me for a full fucking hour and listened to me and heard me out. And I'll tell you, dismissed everything I had to say. <laughs> but that's fine. Listened. If someone is a genuine person and you have a disagreement, they will at least try to find common ground and give some of your arguments credit. Her ignoring you and minimalizing your negative experiences because you are a straight white male is not a good sign. I said, I said that um, just even recognizing that I was a straight white male and that not that I personally perceive that gives me privilege, but that I was trying to say you guys perceive that it gives me privilege. Right. That's the label you put on me. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it really provides that much privilege for me. Where was it when I was homeless? Where was it when I was growing up in poverty? I honestly can't believe that Anita would suggest things like Boogie comes from privilege and deny the experiences of someone who was a very severe victim of abuse. In fact, as far as I'm aware, she didn't even apologize for how she treated Boogie after the panel. This is who these people idolize, and this is who these people are. What you praise is what you will become. I understand that you may have certain beliefs, but why would you want to be around people like this? They say they are all about non-judgment, and then they constantly judge everyone harshly about every little thing. If Lacey feels like she's walking on eggshells around her woke friends, but feels safe around her center-left friends and her conservative friends, then who exactly is more judgmental here? And that's the difference in why I will praise Lacey but criticize Anita Sarkeesian, even though they believe similar things. It has everything to do with their moral principles. I can sit down in a room with Lacey and have a discussion on a topic that we disagree on, but I couldn't with Anita. That's because Lacey follows good moral principles, whereas Anita clearly has no problem lying to people for money. In fact, I don't think Anita has spoken to anyone who publicly disagrees with her, which really highlights how brave Lacey was when she talked to Sargon, because she made the first move on that, and having these difficult conversations is actually pretty scary. How many stunning and brave people in the woke mobs would have the courage to do what Lacey did? Here's a little more on why I don't have a problem with people like Chris Reagan or Lacey Green, even though we have a lot of different political beliefs. It's because they say things like this. Yeah, now people know about it, as opposed to all the bad shit that's no, been mean, happening that nobody seems to have ever noticed. The, the, oh, don't even get me started on this. Like, the, the <laughs> former administration did not pass a $1.5 trillion deficit it, you That's, know, to put us right. further in debt, and you know who's going to pay for it? Yeah. Well, well hold, hold on. O Obama increased the deficit dramatically. 
he, he lowered did, the deficit. But and I will, the, I will prove that with facts and data right Google now. Google it right now. She was referring to the Trump administration here. Personally, I don't care if this specific thing was true or not. I'm more interested in the discussion of her values. We both agree that deficit spending and having to pay other people's bills is bad. It doesn't seem to be like this now, but I remember a time when people on the left commonly didn't like racking up trillions of dollars of debt because spending money you don't have is stupid, especially spending a lot of money you don't have. It's why I'm so insistent that people get out of debt because if they tolerate debt in their personal lives, they will tolerate government debt. Here's something else that might win your favor. Mm -hmm. Of course, due process is very important. Of course, you know, all of the, these things that are in place to ensure the delivery of justice in our system should be there. You know, those are very important protections against misuse of the system. And I think that it should be a punishable crime to lie about these things, especially if you ruin someone's reputation. Yeah. And one more for the road. You know, I support freedom of speech. People should be able to say whatever they want, including hate speech. But do you want to know what really sets her apart from the woke people I criticize all the time? She's gotten mental health treatment. I've always dealt with depression really, really intensely. Um, but I got treated in April for the first time with a treatment that actually works. Were you doing talk therapy while you were doing that? Yeah, I, I've always done talk therapy. She's done a lot of talk therapy in the past. And the recent stuff she referred to was some new supplements she was taking. I tried to fit all that into one small clip but her explanation was way too long. More importantly, this is what therapy looks like, and it's why I constantly insist that people get treatment for their psychological issues. It's because people who have lots of psychological issues either believe tons of stupid things so they are very easily radicalized, or they have no moral principles so they have no problem manipulating and lying to people for personal gain. Getting treatment is what stops these radical groups. Lacey seems to agree. And then we wonder why we have such a problem with all these people acting out and behaving in terrible ways. It's because people aren't getting treated. Radicals do horrible things, all while pretending to be the kindest and best people in the world. They have to pretend they are the good guys because it's a marketing strategy. You can understand tactics like this by reading a book called Propaganda by Edward Bernays. I don't think Bernays is a moral person, but the stuff he says about marketing is very true. The best way to market a product is through public perception of that product and public perception of the company who makes it. When people buy something, they want to know it's the best quality product and it comes from a company that is run by good people. This is why companies do things like public donations to various charities. Not only is that a tax write-off, but it's actually advertising. They are advertising how good they are. It's why companies talk about how caring they are towards their customers and their employees, and it's also why tons of companies have been virtue signaling to the woke mobs. They are doing that to increase their public approval so that people buy their products. Public perception is also why YouTube very much wants to remove the dislike count from public view. The dislike button is harming the reputations of the establishment politicians and the companies who virtue signal. It's showing that people don't like wokeness. The transparency of the internet is destroying the establishment's ability to lie about who they are, which is why they've been trying to silence everyone. They can't win a debate with their critics, and they are mad because if their critics point out what liars they are, people will stop listening to them. This is why I think things like the black pill are stupid. They are stupid because the anti-establishment side is winning. Mainstream media's reputation and viewer numbers are in the toilet. Look at the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. After the media completely lied about this self-defense case, after the government's prosecuting lawyer manipulated evidence, after the president called Kyle a white supremacist, after famous blue check marks said his crime was fake, after terrorist threats if Kyle was deemed innocent, the establishment still lost and Kyle was found not guilty on all charges. Think of it this way. They tried to give an innocent teenager life in prison because it fits their stupid political cause. But what it's actually doing is moving people on both sides and the independents to hate the establishment politicians who are promoting wokeness and they hate it when the media does it too. Look at these images. This is why YouTube doesn't want the public to see the dislike counts. The establishment's fake reputation as the good guy is all they have because their policies suck and they just create worse problems than the ones they were trying to solve. Because of that, they're losing people's good favor. On the flip side though, you should take note of the message from the book Propaganda about your reputation and your moral character being your most valuable assets. 
If people don't believe you're a good person, it's a lot more difficult to convince others to be around you. It's more difficult to find a job. And it's very difficult to get people to listen to you. This should be your greatest motivation for doing the right thing. It should also be your motivation to work hard and help people who are in need. Not only does that make the world a better place, but it will also get you a lot more of what you want. But with that said, I think that's enough for this video. So if you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, comment and share. If you would like to support this channel, then you can do so with PayPal, Patreon, or Subscribestar. You can find all of those links in the description. Last, don't forget to check me out on Minds, Odyssey, and Rumble. You can also find those links in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.